Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you, Pastor David Trainum, coming into your heart, your life, your car, your home, wherever you're listening to this broadcast, that thanking you for tuning in. I'm trusting that this is going to be a great week for you, that God is going to open doors, as he said, that no man can close, and that you are going to continue to see an onward and upward call on your life that's going to bring you to the new level in God that he has already ordained for you to attain. So today, as we continue looking at our message of the kingdom, which is the today's title, the message of the kingdom, I want to make certain that you understand where we're at and where we're going with this. You know, I've laid an introduction. Last week, we talked about a, a, a message uh, to the nations. And today, we're going to begin talking about the message of the kingdom. And this is going to last for quite a while. And so now, as we have laid this foundation, we have laid these things out, and, and you are with us. My hope is that you're studying, as I said. Remember, I, I said this in the beginning, that God wants us to study the word of God, that you are also doing that with me as we go along, that some of the principles and the, the precepts that I'm talking about, you're going to jot them down. You're going to bring them uh, uh, to your remembrance. You know, today with cell phones, we can put them in a note or something like that and just have a compilation of some truths that's going to keep your mind focused and keep you, you know, uh, focused on the truths of God's word. Okay, and so now today, as we look at the message of the kingdom, I want to start by saying this. It's August the 5th. Today's my nephew's birthday, Keith Mormon. Happy birthday, Keith. But also a special person in my life. Her birthday is tomorrow, and that is my wife, who pastored with me for over 30 years and continues to do so here, you know, uh, virtually. Um, Pastor Brenda train them. That is my girl. You know, we've been married since uh, 1984. So we're, we're looking at 40 years. And I am just blessed to, uh, to see God give her another year on this earth. So happy birthday, Brian. We love you. We're continuing to thank God for you and praying for you. And we just know that our world is better off because you're in it. Okay. And so now let's get into the message of the kingdom. Okay, what many people don't realize is that a lack of God's promises manifesting in their lives and not understanding how the kingdom of God works, they are in part set in place by the devil, Satan, the deceiver, whom Jesus refers to as the evil one. And through his deceitful scheming, Satan has duped God's people into settling for a level in life that is below God's intended purposes. And what we've got to do is we've got to make certain that he is not the one that's inciting us to pursue uncertain riches or uncertain material gain at the expense of neglecting our spiritual obligations. And because many Christians lack understanding of the kingdom, they try to fix in the natural what has already been secured and established by God in the spirit. And therefore, they're wasting precious time, precious moments, you know, trying to do something that's already done. Now, Jesus' emphasis when he walked on this earth was always on establishing his father's kingdom on the earth. He used what is ref referred to as parables uh, uh, to influence the understanding of his disciples. And as parables, people, uh, as parables keep people who were only following him for the two fish and five loaves of bread in the dark, so too those same parables shine light on what Christ really meant, the hidden meanings for those who are following him sincerely. Now, ironically, many sermons today keep the religious crowd coming back for the fish and the bread. Their messages have no kingdom substance because the preachers and the teachers lack kingdom understanding themselves. This isn't everyone, as you know. There are some pastors, there's some preachers, there's some teachers out there that have probably a better understanding of the kingdom of God than I do. However, there are also some that has taken up the mantle of a hireling 
And all they're doing is uh, bringing messages that they may have heard from across the country and bringing them into their house. And because somebody has already heard that in their house, they're affirming that this is a word from God when that is not necessarily the case. And so what they do in those instances, a lot of times they overstress the manifestation of the promises of God. And they underemphasize the fact that God has already made provision for the needs of his people. Or they reveal how to access the promises that make up God's kingdom by doing something instead of receiving what God has already said. Therefore, by doing these things, some preachers keep people dependent upon themselves. Therefore, the truth of how God's kingdom operates is often hidden within a natural principle. And this keeps people that are sincere in their walk with God from stumbling over kingdom truth. And so we must understand, I got to make sure I said this properly. This keeps people that are insincere in their walk with God from stumbling upon kingdom truth, okay? It keeps people that are not sincere with God. It keeps people that are just coming for, as I said, the two fish and a lot and in the uh, the five, uh, two fish and five loaves of bread. It keeps them coming back time and time and time again, and then eventually they stumble upon the kingdom truth of God's word. So therefore, you must understand, Christ is just as interested in protecting kingdom revelation from outsiders as he is in revealing the hidden meaning of scripture to his true followers. Therefore, he often hides the truth within parables. And a parable, and let me say this first, parables did not cease when the Bible began to be printed. They didn't cease when the Gospels were over. They didn't cease when Jesus ascended into heaven. They continue to go. There are still hidden truths within the Word of God that has a greater spiritual meaning to them. In a parable at this particular point, and from the standpoint for which I am sharing, is an analogy, or it's a parallel that gives an unknown truth that is hidden within a truth that is easier to understand by the hearer. Okay? And that's really all it is. It's a it's an analogy, it gives a parallel of an unknown truth hidden within a truth that is easier to understand by the hearer. And I'm going to give you one in a moment, show you how simple it was. Now, the unknown truth is for the maturing follower of God. And the known truth is for those outside of the kingdom. Again, those who are seeking after the two fish and five loaves of bread. And so, therefore, no matter what, both are benefiting from Christ's analogy, however, one is going to benefit temporarily, and the other is going to benefit the kingdom of God, which can be an eternal revelation, okay? And so although the obvious truth is easier to recognize and understand, it takes spiritual discernment and understanding to embrace the hidden truth contained within the story that is revealed. And often when a parable is explained, it is done from a natural perspective. And that limits the person hearing to what is more easily understood or revealed. And it does not expose by the Spirit what God's greater hidden meaning is. In one specific case, Jesus shows how a parable works by giving the known truth and revealing the unknown truth. And this becomes the standard for how all kingdom principles work. As he said, if you cannot understand this truth, how can you understand all other parables? And as a backdrop to what I want to share from the book of Matthew in chapter 13, 
The book of Mark chapter four reveals something that Jesus states that's important to our teaching. And as Jesus shares with the people the parable that I'm going to read again from Matthew chapter 13. In Mark chapter 4, he tells his disciples, those are his followers, those are people that were handpicked by God to be his witnesses on the earth. He tells these disciples the reason why he spoke in parables. And so after giving the parable, which we refer to as the parable of the sower, Jesus goes into the deeper meaning of using parables to explain the hidden truth that's there. Mark chapter 4 and verse 10, like I said, I just want to use it as a backdrop to Matthew chapter 13. It says, when he was alone, Jesus, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you, it has been given to know the mystery of, get it, the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that verse 12 says, seeing, they may see and not perceive, and hearing, they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven. Now, the Lord gives parables or hides greater truths within natural truths that are more easily understood. And this is why every person or every Christian, for that matter, cannot understand or even recognize kingdom truth. These truths are hidden in plain sight. And the question that could be posed is, if God loves everybody, he wants everybody saved, how come he's hiding his truth from people who do not believe? First of all, the hidden truth is not for all of his followers. Understand. When he said this, there were followers there, but then there were disciples. And it was the disciples that he was unveiling his hidden truth to. And so first, if we want to answer that question, if God loves everyone, how comes he's hiding his truth from people who do not believe? First of all, as he instructed us to not cast our pearls before swine, God does not cast his pearls before swine. Swine can be a, an analogy of people who are only going to trample what he gives them underfoot. They have no regard for him. They have no regard for the truth, and they have no regard for the kingdom. Pigs, if you will, swine, hogs, they will walk on, lay and sleep on, and even eat up. <laughs> the very thing that was given to nourish them, even if something is not good for them. And God's word is given to nourish our spirits and, and enrich our lives because we are kingdom citizens. And to give his word and the manifestation of his word to those who have no regard for him, those who have no regard for his kingdom rule, and those who have no regard for his authority as king, it's going to undermine everything that he stands for. And so first, he will not cast his pearls before a swan. And then secondly, you got to understand, this is not in reference to saving truth, where someone can hear the word and respond to God's call of salvation. Many people are going to repent, but neglect the conversion process that Paul called people to in Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, where he said, repent and be converted. It's the conversion process that many believers refuse to go through. And so God revealing the kingdom to his disciples, it speaks of, hear it, a maturing faith. And he reserves his revelation for those who have sold out to him and those who have chosen to live in obedience to his word. Therefore, salvation is settled. And God is going to stand by his word when he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Understand this, God said it and he meant it. However, this is the entrance to the kingdom. It takes a converted heart and a converted mind, or I should say a renewed mind, to understand and embrace God's greater kingdom principles. 
Now this brings me to Matthew chapter 13. And look at what he says. And 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 this is, as we say, the print the parable of the sower who sows the word. And we look at this as a kingdom principle. And I'm going to just read this part, talk a little bit, and stop and pick up next time explaining what this parable actually means. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 3, it says, Then he spoke many things to them in parables. Remember, a hidden truth with a revealed truth. Saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, verse 4, some seed fell by the wayside. And the birds came and devoured the seeds. Some seed fell on stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Then he says, but others fell on good ground and yielded the crop some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And then he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, now, as you see, Jesus did not introduce the parable or spend time explaining it. He knew that everybody understood the story of a farmer and seed and the importance of the weather being right, the importance of having water, the importance of the soil being proper. See, he knew that people knew this, so he didn't, ex he didn't spend time explaining it. And often when you hear this parable shared, it is done so in reference to how God increases you and, and how this ministry or that ministry is good soil when you give there. And, when, and if you give and, and you give in faith, your life is going to increase more and more because, and by the way, we're just doing great things for God. My friend, this is a great principle, but a critical point is missed. This parable it's an analogy about God's kingdom and how his kingdom is going to withstand the trials of life being stony ground, rocky places, the wind, the rain, and the flood. And as we see in his interpretation of this or the explanation of what the parable is, he's referring to these particular things as the word of God. You see, if a priority is placed on his word and therefore his kingdom, your heart becomes the fertile soil that will produce his kingdom promises in an increasing manner, 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold based on the time and the effort that you put in. And in Jesus revealing this, quote-unquote, Fold principle. He is saying that the kingdom does not always operate from the perspective of tit for tat. Now, notice what I said, does not always operate that way. You give God 10 and he'll give you 20. Or he'll give you double for your trouble. And I understand those are principles that we can take out of the word of God. But please understand the example that Jesus is giving. And he is giving 30-fold increase. 60-fold increase and 100-fold increase, meaning something has increased to 100 times the original amount or 100 times its value. For example, if you have $100 and you place it in the right place and it, incre and it increases 100-fold, you will have $10 times $100, which would be $1,000. Sometimes we look and we say, well, I gave $10. I didn't get $1,000. You, you missed the point here. We're talking about the increase that God desires, not so much what we want. And there's been times when if we would think about it, and you've been walking with God for any length of time, and I mean really walking with God, not just going to church, you'll understand 
this principle because there were times when God came in and blessed your life, blew your doors away, and set you up for the next level that he brought you to. So God always blesses his people beyond their wildest dreams. However, our understanding of how he operates has been limited by church doctrine in our personal needs being met. And understanding God's kingdom keeps the people of God grounded when the storms of life prevail and as they go through seasons of drought and the adversities of life come. And know that your life has a 100-fold promise by God that, keep, that should keep your expectancy high uh, even as we are blessed in increments along the way. Because as you continue in obedience to his word, he is going to, he has promised that he would bring to pass the things that he has caused to be revealed in his word. Okay, so we're going to stop here and pick up next week as we continue in the message of the kingdom. And we're going to be looking at next week, the foundation for kingdom truth. As we continue looking at Matthew 13, and we look at these mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So until then, Pastor David, thanking you again for tuning in, thanking you for allowing me to speak into your life. And I trust that these truths are really impacting your life. Put them line upon line, precept upon precept, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Continue to build on these things because you're going to see. They will benefit your life. And so until next week, God bless you. Thank you so much again for tuning in. We know that God has great things in store. And because of that, we always have an expectancy that he is going to do above and beyond my expectation. God bless you.